What is up guys? My name is Sam World. Today we're gonna be talking about something that doesn't get enough love on my YouTube channel and that is claps. How to layer claps. Why do we want to layer claps? Now please keep in mind that picking the right clap is super important. Some tracks will work better with longer claps and some tracks will work better with shorter claps. It's all about experimenting and what the track is asking for. So if essentially you're making something that's slower, more hip hop -y, uh, chill, you might go with a textured clap. While if you're making fast, you know, progressive house stuff, you might go with a shorter or snappier clap. At the end of the day, you have to experiment to see what works best. And since you're the producer, you have to make sure you make the right decision. Now there might come a time where you have the right clap, but it just doesn't sound right. You feel like it needs a bit of width. It needs a bit of something. That's when you would want to layer your clap, a clap that already sounds good, but you just want to spice it up a little bit. Now, there are a couple of reasons you would want to layer a clap that you think already sounds good. The first reason is that it just sounds weak, but you like something about it. Obviously it's working, but it just sounds weak. The second reason you might want to layer a clap is that it's too short and you want to add a bit of a longer release to it. So then you would layer another clap that has a longer release to it to just, again, supplement that main clap you really like. Third reason for layering a clap is that you want a bit more width out of it. What this introduces is that you can pan one clap a little bit to the left, the other one a little bit to the right, and you start to get a bit more stereo vibe out of it. Please keep in mind that this is different from putting the Haas effect or duplicating that same clap over and panning hard left and hard right on it. This is a little bit cleaner and it sounds better if you can pull it off. So this is one reason why you might want to layer a clap. The fourth reason to layer claps, and this is a big one, is to develop a unique sound for your clap. You know, don't don't underestimate the, the amount. A, a clap that sounds unique, maybe it might be a layer you layer it with that you can just keep doing and you just switch that main clap out. That could be the key to developing a unique clap where if someone hears a track, they're gonna be like, yo, that sounds like a track, or like a clap, a track that was made by so-and-so. It's a very powerful thing, guys. And again, creating that uniqueness and that sound just comes from doing, finding something unique or finding something different and using it over and over again in your track to a point where it becomes a staple in your track. And layering a clap might be a, a big thing for that. And finally, guys, the last reason is to create a textured clap, as you're gonna see here. Sometimes we wanna create claps that sound like multiple people are clapping, while we might wanna create a clap that just has a bit more grit or crunch to it, then layering the clap would be a solution to that. So those are gonna be five reasons why you might wanna layer claps. So right now we're gonna go into an example where I have a kick and a bass, and we're gonna put a clap on there that sounds decent, and then we're gonna layer it to just give it a bit more of a unique sound, a bit of a different sound. As always guys, if you wanna support my channel, best way to do it, evilsounds.com. That is my website where I release all my sound design work. I recently released a sound bank called Explorations for Serum. So if you're making melodic house, make sure to check it out. And if you like the sound, support the channel. That is the best way to do it. You guys keep me going and let's get straight into this tutorial. All right, guys, and welcome inside of Ableton. Now here I have a very basic clap, which is okay. Uh, let's just level it properly, but it sounds like this. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna mono it down so we have a basic mono clap, okay? Uh, so this is gonna be a very standard, just 909, 808 kind of clap. Okay. Now, the first reason, again, we might decide to layer is that the clap just sounds weak to you and you want that clap to be heard and you want it to be felt. So the more popular way to actually layer, and this is something you see a lot of people do, is to layer a clap with a snare drum. Now, the reason this works really well is that a clap usually will have its meat around the mid high. So if I go here and I boost around this area, That's sort of like the meat of the clap. And essentially, the clap is made by utilizing noise and getting an envelope which looks something like similar to this. One, two, three. Uh, you can do a clap like that in Serum with some bright white noise, and that's how I make a lot of the claps for these kind of packs. So with the snare, the th difference is that the meat of the snare is actually going to be more on this area over here, and it results in a pretty good, pretty good combination to just get that, again, that power coming in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a clap from the same pack I got this clap from, and we'll use the snare. And let's use a very short one that has a bit of punch to it. And we'll use this one here. Let's level it around the same. And you can kind of hear already what the clap and the snare are doing. That clap just got a pair of balls, essentially, and it's ready to take on the world. 
Um, so that's one of the more standard combinations. But a lot of times what tends to happen too is you get a little bit of the high frequencies coming from the snare. So from there, you might decide to just EQ out some of that high information and keep that mid-low power from the snare. There are going to be times where the adding the highs of the snare actually works pretty well. Uh, but it's going to be up to you to kind of decide what you want. But that's the first combination to just get the clap to sound a little bit stronger. Of course, you can grab other claps that have a bit more meat to them. As some claps that you use from sample pack companies will be already layered with the snare drum. Now tackling the second reason we might layer, you might decide like, you know what? I need a longer clap for this, a clap with a bit more chas at the end of it. So that's where adding another clap will come in handy. So here we have this clap that's going to sound like this. Okay, and what we're going to do is just get rid of the initial part of it as we don't want that to be part of our clap. We just want that last part of it. Essentially, we're borrowing so that we can add it to our main clap there. And let's just get a, some, somewhat of a response here on the envelope. And that might be a bit too long, so we're just going to... So once we get the envelopes right, we can start to level this a little bit better. To just get that nice response. Again, this is layering the clap. I could definitely layer the clap as a full if I thought it sounded good. But again, for this kind of track where it's more of a bass and stuff, we don't really want like a strong clap like crazy, crazy. We just want a little bit of that uh, sustainer relief. And then from there, let's just mono that down just so that we don't get any width. That's going to be the next reason to layer. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. This is how we're going to go about laying the clap. You can also choose to add maybe a bit of reverb to the clap, uh, but this is going to be a good example of why you would want to layer a clap just to get a little bit more release out of it. You can also layer white noise if you want to that's coming down and just give it that nice vibe if you want, but this is a great way to do that. Utilizing other claps that have that long release. Maybe you don't like the initial part of it because it might be too hype for what you're making. So utilizing that, you can go in, and if you find, like, again, uh, this sounds too high pitched, you can always pitch it down. Like so. Uh, to get more of the response that you want out of it. And again, if you want this longer, then just go for it as well. Now, adding width to a clap, guys, via layering is actually a lot cleaner than utilizing the more popular way of doing the Haas effect. And I'll show you what I mean. The Haas effect is essentially getting a clap that is in mono out of phase. It's getting the left and the right signal out of phase. So essentially, the left signal will hit first, and then the right signal will hit a little bit after it. And that creates this sort of like tra tra effect. In stereo, it sounds pretty good, and it's going to sound something like this. Okay, uh, however, if we bring this back into mono, then you can hear how out of phase it sounds like as the left and the right signal get brought into mono. It sounds ugh, like you can hear. And back to normal there. Now, the other way of doing this, guys, and this is something that tutorials say, is to duplicate that clap, pan left, hard left, and hard right to get, again, a wider response. But what you will find usually happens is that it just collapses back into mono. And the reason for that is that if you have something that sounds the same hard left and hard right, it's just gonna come back into mono. So what we need to do is layer another clap that sounds similar but different. Okay, and we're gonna do that same trick, hard pan left, hard pan right. And now when we hear them together, you can see how it sounds like. Now, if I mono this whole channel, It still sounds good. And that is the power of layering the clap in this way where you're going to create a hard right and a hard left signal. Now, the last thing I'll say, and this is a little bit more extreme, and I don't know if I want to recommend for you to do it, is that you could actually have, let's say, like four claps, and each one could be panned. Like one of them can be pan 15L, 15R, and then the other one 23L, and the other one 24R to get a wide response clap that just covers almost every part of the, uh, of the stereo image. Again, that's something that you can actually do if you want to, but I don't recommend it. I think you should just find one clap that is good. But if you're making like claps, uh, like new claps, this is a great way to do that and add a bit of width and get a clap that just sounds strong.
Uh, from there, maybe I could just make two of these be in mono. Uh, but that's another great way to do it. Now, the fourth reason to layer clap, guys, is obviously to sound unique, get a more unique sounding clap. And for this, you're going to have to experiment a bit. And usually when anyone says they're experimenting is that they don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know what the outcome is going to be. But hopefully something comes out of it, a happy accident that they can actually utilize in a track. Now, the best advice I can give you for this is one that I received from a good sound designer friend of mine that does sound design for animations. And what I might mean by this is that let's say someone animates like a new animal and a new planet and that's part of the movie. There needs to be a sound that this animal is going to make to sell the effect. So usually what sound designers do is that they'll graph something that people will hear and already go. That sounds like an animal. For instance, let's say the animal that is being animated is more like a, similar to a cat or a lion or a cheetah. Uh, what sound designers will do is they'll grab the actual sound, but then they'll start to mess with it. They'll start to add stuff, layers to, again, sell the, the sound. The fact that you have something that people recognize as an animal will help sell the sound that, okay, this does sound like an animal sound effect, and it will sell, again, that animation. So what we can do here is have a clap or something that sounds like a clap uh, and layer it with a clap or even get rid of the clap and find something that sounds different. So, for instance, here, if I go into Foley, I could grab something maybe like this. And that might be a bit too hardcore, but maybe we could use the ending of it and layer it with our clap to give it more of that little a kind of kind of watery kind of sound to it. Uh, we could start to maybe even down pitch this a bit more if you feel it's going to work. And just get like cool little vibes added to the clap. Some things I've heard is I have heard like cowbells being added to claps before it makes it smack a little bit harder even like just a snare and a cow uh could be another way uh the other thing too is that you can start to kind of off shit it a bit off shit <laughs> off shit it uh not not shit but like off offset it a bit so that so it comes a little later and you create more of a longer kind of textured clock you can bring it in there like so or just have it land right there. You can also use a delay feature inside of Ableton to kind of get uh, to sound better. And again, it's all about experimenting. You don't know what's going to work. So sometimes just layering these things can help. Like for instance, that actually works pretty well in creating a, a nice sort of unique clap to it. The question is, is it going to work in a track and is it needed a lot of the times? For instance, here, maybe it needs to be shorter. And from there, you would start to kind of mix it. Like you might decide to EQ it, be like, eh, I like that, but I only like the high ends on it, baby. So you just uh, to get the high end on it and vice versa. Again, it's all about experimenting and finding the right sound combination that you can utilize. And finally, guys, the last reason you might decide to layer is just to create a textured clap. And this is something I learned from watching an Amore's uh, Sonic Academy tutorial on the making of his song Ruby. As I made the exploration sounds that I was looking for uh, inspiration on what these guys are doing to get these sounds and vice versa. So I definitely watched that and I definitely recommend you guys watch it. It's definitely a good video, a good series to watch. Uh, but one of the things he did is he actually got a, a couple of different sounding like claps and different textured instruments. So what I could do is maybe go here and I don't know, grab like a damn hat. We'll do like a couple things like just grab that. Uh, let's grab a percussion. Maybe that. And then we'll have that all layered. And the idea is to get a, to get a grainy or textured clap is that you want the clap to be like uh, similar to those foleys that we added. But you don't want them to land at the same time. But you want to create something that's going to sound uh, very grainy. So for that, we might decide to go. And you might offset stuff a little bit like. And the idea is to create, again, that grainy clap so there's a lot of movement in. From there, it's about EQing. So you might have that. Okay, cool. But this guy, maybe it's just a bit too like. Uh, so we might decide to just EQ it. There's something we like about. Like. And that's going to be a good way to create a textured clap. I mean, at the end of the day, honestly, all we really needed was this guy here as this added a lot more movement to the clap. Uh, but again, using Foley, as I made a video before on it, is another great way to add that texture layer to the clap. 
And that will conclude my video on layering claps, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you guys want to add to the video, leave it down in the comments down below. But with that being said, guys, if you want to support my channel, make sure to head over to evilsounds.com. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care, and you guys have an amazing day.